Are you a fan of Star Wars, Marvel, Jurassic Park, The Office, or Disney and Pixar movies? Or do you just want a sleek, comfortable pattern shirt? Then you need to check out Roosevelt's.com. Roosevelt's clothing is the most eye-catching and comfortable clothing available on the market. From button-ups to hoodies, hats, and more, Roosevelt's truly has something for everyone. Check them out today at Roosevelt's.com. That is R-S-V-L-T-S dot com. And when you do, make sure to use promo code SWOGGLE to save 20% off your order. Made for those with a love of sports, pop culture, and all of the above, this is clothing for the bold and fun for those who dare mighty things. So that's promo code SWOGGLE to save 20% off new clearance and restocks at roosevelts.com. Another episode of Going Postal. This week, we get into a small talk with none other than the, than the legendary Joe Shoes. But before we get to that, I'm Dylan. That's George. George, talk to him. Guys, welcome to this episode of Going Postal. As Dylan said, this is Swaggle sit down with Captain Joe Shoes. You know him, you love him, and if you don't know him, you're going to know a whole lot about him after this episode. Uh, it's a long one. So we're going to be splitting this up into part one and part two. Uh, as both of them said to me separately in messages, the reason that it went so long is that it was just two buds yucking. So, buds yucking um, it up, man. I, and that's I exactly live- what this was. And you can tell throughout the entire uh, interview, that's exactly what it is. Before we go any further, you got to go and check out. At Going Postal Pod on all forms of social media. At Dylan Postal on all forms of social media. And of course, guys, this podcast brought to you by our good friends at the Roosevelt's brand, R-S-V-L-T-S dot com. Get yourself 20% off your order by using code SWOGGLE. YouTube.com slash Dylan Postal. You've also got Twitch.tv slash Dylan Postal. SWOGGLEAUCTION.com. Get yourself a free $10 whatnot credit and DylanPostel.com, the one-stop shop for all things Swoggle, the merch store, the pro wrestling tea store, all things Swoggle, appearances, all that right there, DylanPostel.com. So we're going to split it up. They went for almost two hours, so we're going to split it up into two episodes because that's a lot to take into one episode. I, so I got to the I got to the, the like the major pod stuff, and I go, we're over an hour in. Oh, no. But there, and then like, I didn't know what to cut, and I, I like if anything of, so so as you guys know, I do very little notes for like interviews with my buddies, but I feel really dumb if I don't do notes, so I had to, and so I'm just like deleting notes of things to bring up, and and stuff because I don't want it to go crazy long, but here it is. Uh, if you don't know shoes. If you're not in the major world or uh, whatnot, whatnot, if you're not in the world, I hope you really enjoy this episode and getting to know a guy that really has become a, uh, a good friend of myself. Um, it wouldn't be a one-on-one small talk interview from myself if there wasn't technical issues. Guys, this is once again. With some technical issue on my end, instead of using the beautiful microphone I had, I was using my MacBook Pro mic. That's why it sounds maybe a little off. Not as beautiful as it might sound now. Guys, I'm I'm not good at things. (laughs) I've realized. I messaged George, a strong GD, when he, he said to me there was a microphone issue. And I said, I I can't get through one of these. I don't think, I truly don't think there's been one of these small talks where I've gotten through where either the mic has been on the whole time, where I've been recording on my camera the whole time, 
I don't think there's been one where everything is went correctly. And I well, made today sure. we started and your light was blue. Landon comes in here and he messes with my stuff. I walk in, I turn my light on, ready to record, and it's blue. Which means he was playing in my office, playing Xbox in my office, in front of a blue light. For what reason? I'm going to have to ask him. I'm very confused the, by the this. ambiance. He's setting the ambiance of the room. Guys, I can't do this on my own. That's why I need George. That's why I need everyone to literally guide me by the hand. Here's shoes. Guys, let's talk about Mad Cat Beard Care. They make my beard feel soft, silky smooth, and they can do the same for yours. A one-man show since 2019, Mad Cat uses a portion of their sales to care for local stray cats. That money covers their medical bills and finds them safe spaces and forever homes. Their products are made to order with vitamins and all natural oils that promote strong, healthy hair and moisturize your skin as well. They've got exclusive scents for myself, as well as other wrestlers like my good pal Brian Myers, Mr. Kennedy, and Ring of Honor legend Delirious. Make sure to check out all of their scents, along with my Swoggled scent, which has notes of lavender and sage. I absolutely love this scent. And guys, we've got an exclusive offer for listeners of Going Postal. Use promo code SWOGGLED to save yourself 15% on your orders only at madcatbeardcare.com. That is swoggled with a D on the end to save yourself 15% on your orders at madcatbeardcare.com. Guys, that's 15% with promo code swoggled. And remember, the Mad Cat makes a happy beard. This is a... Uh... This is what we're going with, huh? <laughs> what What do you mean? Oh, um, I'm sorry. Hold on. This is... <laughs> that this better? Is... This is what we're working with? <laughs> hey, doing, guys! <laughs> <laughs> the pasta cough is in effect. I don't. I don't even. I. He signed on. I immediately hit record because there's no. I don't even know how to intro this one, guys. This is this is a small talk. I, I've had friends of mine. I've had heroes of mine. There isn't. There and isn't Tommy many Dreamer. like this man. <laughs> the legendary Joe Shoes is the guest on this on this month's small talk. Joe, hey pal, it's good to see you. This has got to be uh, probably the worst guest you've ever had, and it just shows how uh, how the mighty have fallen. Right from six, <laughs> Wrestle- from six WrestleManias to doing an interview with Captain Joe Shoes. I, I yeah. I, yeah, I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> I I always start these uh, with how we met, and it just got brought up between me, you, and Knick as to you and I met originally at Live Six. So that's I don't. The first time I felt like we met before that when we met there. I was pretty convinced that that was the first time we had met, but it's really, it really is the first time we met. We had met in passing, it turns out. Okay. At, uh, some indie show in New Jersey, a wrestle pro show. Do you remember which one it was or what I did? Uh, I believe you wrestled the lifeguard. The what? The lifeguard. Who's that? He was one of Pat Buck's students. I don't think so. You were there. That that that's what you did that day, and we said hello. I was the revolting blob at the time. Was this in the gym? Was this at Rahway? Yeah, this was Rahway. I don't remember ever wrestling a lifeguard. Well, you did. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. 
So that was an in pass. I knew it. I I had a feeling we had met before live. But we but we didn't really meet. That live show, Live 6 in Baltimore, was like the first time we had any real interaction. And we didn't even, I feel like we didn't even really meet. Everyone knows the story of Live 6. If you're part of the Major Pod world, if you're not, and you're just a fan of uh, myself, thanks. Um, and uh, you don't know, but uh, but I'll paint the picture for you. Podcast had a live the picture show, for you. Their sixth rendition of their live shows, and uh, one Dylan got a tad sleepy that evening. Um, tad, yeah. And and uh, Joe, my friend Joe, put me to bed, so to speak. And there's a certain photo that haunts me to this day that. I still can't get rid of, and you are the cause of said photo. I am. Uh, I knew you at that point for about wow, five hours, <laughs> and and it has become one of the most infamous things probably in your life now, right? Yeah, and it's something I literally can't shake. It's it's no, a. I mean, it's gold. It's so I just noticed. Because it just got brought up the anniversary of it the other day, the f- the, the toe twitching, the oh, random the toe twitching in the video of it got me, and that's the only like humor I find in it anymore. <laughs> besides that, you were the one involved. So here's the story with that. I actually drove you back to the hotel that night. I yep. loaded you into the back seat. Yep, and I just assumed. You know, you're you're a midget. Like, how heavy can you be? And (laughs) Brian was like, no, dude, he's really fucking thick. (laughs) So Brian lifts you up with the power of a thousand suns. And he goes, should we sit him up or lay him down? And I deadpan look at him. I go, well, he's a midget. He could lay comfortably in the (laughs) backseat. And that wasn't that like it wasn't meant to be demeaning. That was just like me Let doing me anal- analysis of the situation. And so we did. We laid you down. You were out cold. I spoke to you the entire ride back to the hotel, but you were out cold. You didn't hear it. Um, and when we got there, Brian was waiting for us with a luggage cart. We loaded you onto the luggage cart. Me, you, and Brian all went up in the elevator together. And I knew that Mark, Matt, and Zombie Sailor were behind us. They were waiting for the elevator to come back down so they could come up. Now, I did not know they were filming. So when we got out of the elevator, we made the turn. Brian had your room key. So he went to open your door. And I just stopped. And I, I turned you around as I'm wheeling you. And I just put you in front of the elevator. And Brian goes, what are you doing? His room's right here. And I go, oh, I just have to do something. And he didn't question it. <laughs> you knew. So, so I, I left you in front of the elevator and I just hid behind the sidewall there. <laughs> but I didn't know they were filming. I just thought they would come up, the door would open, everyone would laugh, and then we'd, then we'd put you to bed. And it turns out, happenstance, luck, coincidence, sometimes these things all come together and make for a legendary moment. So, I thought this whole time that they were coming down the elevator into the lobby, and they met us as we arrived. No. You set it up even better. Yeah. This whole time, literally, until now, I thought they came down the elevator to the lobby, like, to, to keep hanging out, and there we were trying to go up. No. Okay. Not... That's not what happened. We we were going up, and then because we had you on the cart, yep. and everybody had bags and boxes that we were bringing back from the show, so it wasn't like we could fit everybody in the elevator at one time. So the three of us went up first. I knew they were coming right behind us, so I just left you in front of the elevator. What and let me tell you this. This is, this is a true story. Now, my father passed away in February of this year, mm-hmm. and one of the, when the last time I saw him, was a few weeks after we had done 
the live show in Orlando and we went on the Disney trip, the whole major yeah. pod crew. And I went there and he couldn't really communicate much at that point. Every now and then he would get a clear sentence out. The last clear thing, this is how ridiculous this is. The last clear thing my father said to me was I was showing him the vlog on YouTube from our Disney trip and you come on the screen and he goes, Oh, that's your midget friend who lost his pants. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's, I mean, that's, and that's, I love that that's how I'll always live to him now. That That's the best. That makes me so happy. The last uh, real sentence I ever heard from my father was, <laughs> that's your midget friend who lost his pants. So, you, that was that was our first meeting, mm-hmm. and you, Brian was was right along with it. Did you? How did the friendship with Brian ever start? And was that through like just Wrestle Pro and Cap, or just random indies, or real real friend things? Um, kind of Wrestle Pro when Brian got fired the first time. Let me back up a little bit. So Brian and I were kind of coming up at, on the indies at the same time, mm-hmm. but he was an NYWC guy. I was from Johnny Rods' school. Um, <clears throat> Johnny Rods didn't want us working a lot of shows because that took money out of his pocket, he thought. Like his right. idea was you just stay at his gym forever until oh, Devon Dudley comes over one day with a briefcase full of contracts for everybody. Uh, oh, here come the Devon, and if you want to go, <laughs> Devon going to bring you the contract. Oh, my striker going to come by. He's going to see you. And like so, and the thing was, the NYWC guys, they didn't do a lot of shows either, but they were running consistent uh, like school shows, but their guys were, uh, for lack of a better term, a lot better than our guys. Okay. Um, and they had like a real building and they were using the old ECW entranceway. So it looked like a better show. Ours was in Gleason's gym, which is a boxing gym. So if you came to one of our student shows, there were like nine boxing rings around. There wasn't a real entranceway. Like it just, it looked like shit. Um, so I knew of Brian cause I was really tuned into the scene at that time. Brian knew of me because even before he got into the business, he was a, a writer on a website that covered the indies in the Northeast. So he knew of me. We didn't know each other. And then we would talk on Twitter from time to time about the Mets. We're both big Mets fans. And then when he got fired from WWE the first time, he was on all the WrestlePro shows. And at that time, I was on WrestlePro doing the revolting blob thing. And so we just would talk and then... We ended up in like a group chat of me, Brian, and CPA talking about the Mets. And I basically, I've spoken to Brian every day for the past, I don't know, nine, ten years now. So it was literally off to the races after that. Pretty much. Um, similar sense of humor, similar love for the Mets. That's you know, how I then, took it as it was a, a wrestling introduction Mets fandom really cemented it. Yeah, Brian didn't know me when I really like truly loved wrestling. He okay. wasn't around for and, and and I did. I you know, like now it it kind of gets lost because I've I've fallen out of love with it for a long time now. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Um so he wasn't around like when I was like committed to it and loved it and watched everything and had my fingers in on the pulse of what was going on. So like we were, I forget where we were. I think it was Pat Buck's wedding actually. And we were talking about the Mets in the, the world series, uh, in the playoffs in 2000. And we're talking about a series and, and Brian's like, Oh, you know, what got me is this game was on the same time as the, uh, uh, one of the WWE pay-per-views. I want to say it was like a, a Hardy's edge and Christian match or something. And he's like, I was flipping back and forth. And I go, you know, it's funny is because he knows me as like this uber Mets fan. I go, you know, what's funny is I didn't change the channel once. I was not leaving a WWE pay-per-view at that time for anything. And he was amazed by that. Really? Yeah. Ha ha. I would have never, that's, 
and how it's lasted. I mean, what year was that? Did you say? I'm sorry. 2012. I think 2013. I was going to say so, 2012, 2013. Um, yeah. And then he was on all the Wrestle Pro shows. It basically yeah. became like his home promotion, and he was doing every show under the sun at <clears> that <throat> point. Um, so we would just run into each other. I knew he was the figure guy, like the collector guy. Um, because even before that, at one point, we have a mutual friend, Jay Silva. I had a buddy who was working on the show Toy Hunter, which was like okay. the first collector based show yep. that was got, kind of getting some play. But, you know, like really when this toy culture that we all know and love now was really becoming a thing. I had a buddy who was working on that show and they wanted to do an episode about wrestling figures. And he was like, hey, what's like the wrestling figure? What's like the grail? Like, what is the figure? Yeah. They were really looking for like some big time $25,000, you know, whatever to make like a real thing out of it. And I, at that point, like, you know, we didn't know what we knew. We didn't know what we know now about like two ups and prototypes and all this stuff that you hear about regularly because of the major pod. At that point, the Rhythm and Blues Greg Valentine had just hit eBay okay. and was like the talk of town. Yep. And I said, really, the biggest thing to me, like I was a figure guy. I was a big figure collector for a long time. And then I kind of transitioned into the numbered promo photos for WWF, the yep. P-Series okay. promo P -series. photos. I had a massive collection of those photos. Mm -hmm. But when... Like, I feel like I knew my stuff when it came to figures and in discussing with my, my big wrestling friend from high school, who was also a collector and is really the guy who got me back into collecting after I kind of lapsed in childhood. Once I hit my teens, um, we're like, I don't know, like maybe like an LJN warrior on the card would be like the big one. And I said, you know what? Let me see if I can reach out to Hawkins. I'm like, if anyone's going to know, it's going to be Hawkins. So I hit up Jay Silva. He puts me in touch with Hawkins. And we kind of go back and forth on it at that point. This is still 2013, 2014. Okay. And you guys, you guys weren't, you guys were still at this point, just Mets buddies. At this point, we really didn't even know each other. Like we knew oh. of each other, but we didn't oh, know each okay, other. Okay. Okay. This yeah. is pre that group chat you were talking about. Yeah. This is before that even. Uh, so Silva hit me with Hawkins number. Hawkins hit me up and we talked, went back and forth for a while. Yep. And then, <clears throat> um, tried to get Brian and Matt on the show at one point, And then they ended up getting Hulk Hogan to do oh. the show instead. So I guess if you get Hulk Hogan, Brian Myers gets bumped or something. I guess that's is, a bit of a, that's a bit of an upgrade, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the episode of the show ended up being Hulk Hogan selling one of his white shirt LJNs mint on card to like the non-popular guy from the black eyed peas. <laughs> apple the apple. That's who it is. Is it, I, 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 apple the apple, I don't know. Fergie, Will I Am, and Apple the Apple. Yep, yep. Big. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Big black. Because eyed if there's peas one out. thing, I, if there's one thing I know about Dylan Postel, his black eyed peas knowledge is only <laughs> exceeded by his knowledge of Nelly's discography. It's it's Nelly, Limp Biscuit, <laughs> black eyed peas. I guess. Uh so, so I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I only knew you as the revolting blob. Most people did. Yeah. How did was that just a hey? I'm gonna do this in a how I pictured this, and I could be wrong. It's happened once. How I pictured this is there was a random Halloween battle royal, and you decided to dress as the revolting blob. Is that how it went? <laughs> Not at all. Son of a bitch. Not even close. Okay. So I, I started in the business in 2001. And okay. my name was just L Shoes, which was a nickname I got in high school. And How? it just carried over. Uh, I had an Italian teacher. So, well, here's here, like when people ask me, like if I'm at a party and they go like, how'd you get the name Shoes? And I say, have you ever met a woman that didn't love shoes? Go ahead, put it over. Put it over, you tiny bitch. Put it over. <laughs> okay. But the real reason is 
<laughs> I had an Italian teacher in high school who was like right off the boat. So he had a very thick accent. And I did a really good impersonation of him. And one day he like took off his shoe in class and was like, like mindlessly, you know, like kicking it around or whatever. Bibbity bobbing, as I say. Yeah. And like, you know, it's high school. So, oh, oh, dude, put your shoes back on. And he's like, <laughs> and he goes, boys, I could take off the shoes and I make a no stink. <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious. So I started doing skits about how he had a shoe fetish and he would fuck shoes in the basement of the school and he would be like boys if you have some shoes some onion dip and a cock you have a party and like it's it's high school so this kind of this is the kind of shit that catches on so like people just started calling me shoes and okay. I'm 15 or 16 and did he know about these no okay but I'll, there's a follow up. In a <laughs> okay. So he he didn't know, but uh, at that point I was back into wrestling heavy. This is like the attitude era now, and I'm gonna start backyard wrestling with my friends. And I'm like, wow, like if you're gonna be a backyard wrestler, you need like a really cool name. And I'm like, well, I've already got this shoes. And at the time, I believed that if you put the Spanish article L in front of anything. It sounds very suave and debonair. So I became L shoes. So my high school yearbook, my senior picture with a little bow tie and stuff says L shoes. Not as your name. It's not like my middle name. Basically. It's Joseph L shoes redacted. You remember your senior quote? We didn't have quotes in our yearbook. You just had L shoes as a fucking middle name. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and I Shitty. also was I also won most likely to be a professional wrestler. So that's in my yearbook as well. Uh, I had an Atari's quote that I can't even remember anymore. I I can't oh, believe that see. you didn't. So at that time you're you're a couple years younger than me. I'm 04. It so, was from it was from uh I was going to At the, that the, point the, the so long a story album, right? That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Uh, See, my I, Atari's is Blue Skies Broken Hearts Next 12 Exits. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, we're meant for each other, Joe. We're meant for each other. We knew it. We knew it this whole time. It's just the little things. So to follow up on this teacher thing, when I last year when I won the FWF tag team titles with Brian, <laughs> um somehow in the alumni newsletter for my high school. It showed the picture of Brian and I with the belt, and it says, Class of 99, uh, known in the wrestling world as Captain Joe Shoes. <laughs> I'm fucking 40 years old. I'm worried about this tiny little Italian man finding out that I made fun of him fucking 25 years ago. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, how, well, okay. Getting back. How does but, that turn into the blob? But so, yeah, so I wrestled as L shoes. It really wasn't going anywhere. It wasn't a character. <laughs> and then, you know, I would, I would do things like I'd wear like these big pimp robes, whatever that I would get that looked nice, you know, whatever. But it, it wasn't really like a character. And it's not like I was ever the best wrestler. Um, but I get a call one day from, uh, Warriors of Wrestling in New Jersey. And they wanted me to do something different. And they're like, we want you to be like a, a playboy buddy Rose. And I'm like, oh, I guess I could do that. So then I became, I come up with the name. I go, well, when Homer Simpson wanted to change his name, the only thing he knew how to spell was Max Power. So I turned that into Maximus Sex Power. I thought yep. sex should be my middle name. <laughs> and then I did that for a little while. And I had moderate success at the Northeast indie level for a while, you know? Um, and then I was kind of done with wrestling. You know, I was doing like, you know, I was like the once a month type guy and I was kind of okay with it. Like I always had a real job because like when I started 
it was like the Johnny Ace era. So you had to be 6'2", 21 years old, a former football player. So like, I'm, I'm pretty much feeling like I'm, I'm done with wrestling or wrestling's done with me, which is, which is fine. At least I can wake up when I'm 50 years old and say, you know what? I, at least I tried it, you know? And I, yep. I ended up doing more than I kind of thought I would. I got to wrestle like some of the guys I used to watch on TV, you know, some of the guys I had action figures of. Like that stuff is cool. And like, you should never lose sight of that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm kind of just done and over it. And I get a call one day from Kevin Matthews. And Kevin was a, a one of my buddies from like when I first got in. And I, But like we didn't talk a lot. So when I see his name come up on Caller ID, I'm like, fuck, who died? Like that's where my mind yeah. went immediately. Yep. And I pick up and I go, hello. And he goes, uh, shoes, uh, how fat are you right now? <laughs> And no hello, no like, what's up, man? Just how fat are you right now? And I was like, well, I'm pretty fucking fat. He's, he goes, I'm sitting here with Pat Buck, and he wants to do like a bunch of guys on the shows who were like pop culture wrestler characters. So he wants to know if you want to do Revolting Blob. And I was like, fuck yeah. What man, were the absolutely. other ones? They had a guy who did Bone Saw. Okay. Uh, Macho Man Bonesaw. Yep. Joey Janela was Starman from NES yep. Pro Wrestling. Yep. We had a guy who did Little Mac from Punch Out. Okay. Um, we had a guy who did uh, Teen Wolf. Was he a wrestler? We had a guy. Well, Teen Wolf was a basketball player, but he was a wolf man who also played basketball. Michael and, J. Fox. And then I guess. Yeah, but like yeah. for for our canon, he made the I'm transition. I'm not saying Michael into, Fox was in the goddamn. Re- I I know what you're saying, but yes, we we just had a Teen Wolf character, and he came in and did fucking wrestling. Just get over it, <laughs> you know. But we had like a bunch of these characters, you know, like these sideshow secondary yep. characters, and for all intents and purposes, it was you know you hope something gets over. Like the bone saw thing got over for a while. That guy did pretty well with it. Starman did really well. Yeah, Janela did Starman I, for a bit, right? And then didn't he get yeah. sued by someone? I don't think he got sued. I just think he like he stopped working for WrestlePro. Okay. And then someone else went under the suit. Okay. Um I so I come in and I'm doing the revolting blob. And I thought I maybe could translate that into a little bit of a run. It kind of never really <laughs> went anywhere i mean i'm still sitting on a shit ton of revolting blob novelty mask that i haven't been able to sell (laughs) and this is (laughs) 10 years after the fact um it was fun though like it was fun to be um a different character and not show my face um which is this is the weird thing have you ever wrestled in a mask uh i did the one twice twice yeah okay so because at the beginning you know, at probably around this time, Pat shows were predominantly student shows. Like when I first started, okay. so they all knew each other. They were like a, you know, yeah. a little click, you know, they're like, you know, baked into the fabric. And then I show up and no one has any fucking idea who I am outside of like Pat and Kevin. And so I would show up, say hello to everyone. And then when I started getting dressed and I put the mask on, everyone would come back to me and say hello again Dude. because they didn't realize I was the same fucking guy. So I'm like, this has got to stop. Like, I, I don't want to shake all these fucking hands. So I start wearing my mask into the building. So like, whenever I would get to like a block away from the building, I put the mask on as I pull into the parking lot. Joe, and- Joe, you know how you could have stopped that? You just not wear the mask until you are about to go through the curtain. But then how would I get in my character? In... Like you're a fucking thespian? Like yeah. in my head, yeah. Like, yeah. Of the the blob? Yeah. So the the blob was actually very difficult for me to pick up on because while it's a character that already exists, okay, we don't necessarily know a lot about the blob. So a lot of it is left up to my interpretation. Like, how do I want to portray this blob? And now because Pat Buck is the one who wants me to do it. What he has in his mind might not necessarily be the way I'm portraying it in my mind. So I have to find a way to try to get stuff out of Pat, work it through the old filter, make it my own, 
while still being what he wants it to be, because at the end of the day, he's in charge, right? Like, so it took me a while to really get a feel for being the blob. And then I felt as like, just as I was getting it or Uh being comfortable doing it, Uh it was like, they were like, Hey, we don't want to keep bringing you in. And I was like, "Eh, it happens. I'm very, I'm very perplexed, Joe, as to the thought process of getting into said revolting blob character so much so that you had to wear the mask all the time. Putting the mask on, (laughs) because I look at it like this, and and, and this is going to be completely serious. So I know you're going (laughs) to find it funny. Other people are going to find it funny, but this is legitimately how I thought about it. No one's going to give a shit about any of the moves I do. Uh huh. No one. If if I have the WrestleMania match of the century, no one's going to give a fuck. Yep. People don't remember matches; they remember moments. Correct. So I believe the that's best one of the thing I live by. The best thing that I can do for my offense is have a really cool entrance. Okay. Because the entrance is the first impression. It's yep. like going on a first date. Yep. That's the, that's what people see first. So I used to practice my entrance. I practice my walk. How should this guy walk? At first, like, like I would think like, you know, maybe I should be like Vader and have like that rumble with the, you know, the whole body's moving in one, you know, like the uh-huh. shoulders are almost look robotic where he's coming down because he's so large. Then at one point, uh, Ryback was getting over pretty big at that time on TV. So I yep. was like, Oh, I should do like, instead of feed me more, I should do like pinch my leg, you know, whatever. You know, and I'm trying like all this stuff. I'm like just throwing shit at the wall, just trying to think of ways. And I think like when I finally got it was when I stopped thinking too much and just said, fuck it, let it rip and just came out and just started yelling and having fun with it. Um, But it was the mask helped me try to get into that headspace where I wasn't Joe. I definitely wasn't shoes. I wasn't Maximus sex power. Okay. I needed to be the revolting blob. I How do I make the revolting that. blob? And it's the same thing now with being this fucking captain. <laughs> like, <coughs> yeah, because at the end of the day, no one, you're not interviewing me today because I'm your buddy Joe from Orlando. You're interviewing me because I'm a fucking fat captain guy who hangs out with your friends. Well, we're going to touch on that. We're going to touch on that at uh, towards the end. Uh, but during... I was just talking, and you're talking as well about getting to know Brian more, and then we got into the revolting blob stuff, and then you mentioned how you've worked with all these guys that you've had action figures of, and and the highways and byways as we call it. Um, but I hear, I, I heard a, a birdie told me today that <laughs> that there was a a legend to our friendship. That in 2016 you didn't quite work because you didn't quite show up to the show at Creative Pro when you were supposed no, to work. No, I got work. kicked off the flight. When you, <laughs> 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 I asked, I asked our buddy Brian. I said, "Hey, I'm having our friend Joseph on today. What do you got?" And he goes, <laughs> "Bring up what he no showed Cap, and he was supposed to work me." <laughs> I got kicked off the flight. You. <laughs> come on (laughs) so originally it was supposed to be brian versus danny damanto and danny danny is someone who if you're if you're a northeast wrestling fan he's been all over for 100 years yep and he knows everyone he's he's worked every shindy in the area for 100 years whatever he's also my roommate at one point so when danny had to cancel off the show danny said you know what if you're you know, get the next best thing, just get shoes. So Brian hit me up and he's like, Hey, you want to wrestle me a cap? And I said, absolutely. And I went and had like new gear made. Like I had new gear made for this fucking, cause I haven't like at that point I was really one and a half feet out. You know what I mean? Like I still tiptoed around the margins of being in yep. the business, but for all intents and purposes, I was out. So I went and had like new gear made. I had like gem and the holograms inspired trunks made. Um, so Trump, I'm like, Trump. I'm, Oh, I, yeah. When I was Maximus Sex Power, like the gimmick was like I was a fat Rick Rude and I would do the unveiling okay, so it wasn't, and I wrestled in trunks. And yep, it wasn't so, going to be the blob. 
No, he wanted me to be a heel. So, okay. which is always more fun anyway. Um, and I always felt like I understood Max. I knew how to be Maximus sex power because it was my thing. You know what I mean? Yep. Like I, the characters mean a lot to me. Like if you don't believe in the character and you're just some wrestler, like who gives a shit there? I, I could shake a tree and fucking 119 guys who can do arm drags will fall out. But how many of those guys <laughs> are going to be remembered at the end of the show? Uh, yep. Yep. You know, they may not remember wrestler one, two, and three, but they'll remember the fat guy in the trunks who fucking did a hip swivel. Yep. So I I don't want to give away too much here, but I have a a deal where I fly for free and it's standby. Now my flight looked good. Should have been no problem. I get to the airport. I'm on time. Everything. I get a seat. So I get my ticket. When it's time to board, I board. Before the door is closed, I guess the person showed up whose seat I took. So they came and got me and were like, hey, we're sorry, but this person showed up. We're going to need you uh, to come off. So I hit up Brian. I'm like, bro, I'm sorry. I'm like, I literally just got taken off the plane and now I won't be able to make it in time. It's one it's one of my it's actually a big regret because I would have liked to have that match. If you go on like cagematch.net, it says he beat me. Which what? I doubt would have happened. The, what? I, so it just you guys never ran it back, obviously. No, I mean I wasn't I was never a cap guy. Like I never trained there. Okay. I was never um, yeah, I was, yeah, I, I was already the, living in Cap Florida was, by the time was, he even opened the school. Gone, gone by the time Cap started. Yeah, yep. Okay, you know, I I go and every now and then if I'm in the area, I'll stop in, say hello to, to you know, yeah. to say what's up to Brian or whatever. And every now and then, uh, like if I if he's doing a battle royal or something, I'll be like, hey, I'm going to be in the area if you want to. Yeah, you know, there was um two years ago he did like one of the Halloween battle royals, but he booked Danhausen. And I really wanted to meet Danhausen. So I, th- this is a true story. I go, I really want to meet Danhausen. Is it cool if I come to the show? And he goes, Well, there's a Halloween battle royal on it. So you can come, but you better bring your gear. <laughs> and I'm like, Fuck, I don't want to do the wrestling. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's one of like, dude, I love it. I love the actual being out there. You know what I yeah. mean? Like that. That six to ten minutes is the best six to ten minutes you can have that doesn't end with you sticky and naked. It's literally it's fucking incredible. The most untouchable feeling that if you if you've never done it, it's like it's like the, the, the how you know the the rock stars always say it's just this 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 uh this emotion and this just adrenaline that no one ever you can't describe it and no one if they don't do it. Would, will ever feel it in their life. It's no. And it's almost like a bummer because I want to go to the the teller at the bank and go, hey, just one day I want you to get like when you're handing someone their deposit, the adrenaline right. of that I get. It's, but yeah. the, it's just it's so crazy. It's such a, a different out there feeling. And and think about like what you go through for six minutes. Yeah. Whether it's a three hour flight, four <clears throat> hours sitting around, waiting, waiting, waiting. Now I'm on seventeenth in a you know, I, a twenty two match Frank Goodman show. I always and it's laugh. like Landon and I laugh because we'll do these I'll do these like local like if I if it's a drivable show, he'll come with me. And I'll go, Man, it's three hours there, three hours back. He goes, Oh I go, Yeah. We're gonna be in the car double as long as we're gonna be at the whole show. Like, I, and I think about that. I go, man, I'm. It's three hours there, and then f- talk out the match for twenty minutes because it's the Dylan Postel house show match. A lot of the mm-hmm. time these days, and then it's go out there for ten minutes, get in the car and go home. It's like, man, this, it's the light, but the adrenaline. You're still feeling it when you get back in the car, and until that halfway point in the drive home when it wears off, and then it just sucks. But it's just like, you don't, it's very indescribable. It truly is 
indescribable and you you wish everyone could feel it at their job here and there you really do it's and it's one of those things like i'm 42 now yeah i wrestled in my teens i wrestled in my 20s i wrestled in my 30s i wrestled in my 40s now and like let's call a spade a spade like i shouldn't be in a ring at this point like you know what i mean like i i i don't belong there and i have enough respect for the people still doing it that i understand like i really shouldn't be taking other people's spots like when people call me up and want me to be booked on stuff but there's just still at this point as detached as i am from professional wrestling which is very detached um i do not follow the products anymore i because i still follow my friends from the business i see stuff come across my social media feeds my friends my civilian friends still watch the product all the time. So it's constantly in group chat. So I have an idea of what's going on, but I'm not actively following. But like, there's still something about being out there where when I do get the opportunity, I do kind of get itchy. And I'm like, even though I know my body's not really up for it, I'm like, all right. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's run it one time. Uh, but, but you also are, uh, you know, your limits like I do of, Hey, Let's go out and have fun because exactly what you said, 97 arm drags on the show and there's going to be one revolting blob in Captain Shoes. Like, like that's, think that's, about it. Like, and we know that. Do you, was there a certain moment like in wrestling where you just watched and you were like, oh, this shit is awesome. Yeah. The minute, the minute I started. So like I talk about it a lot. I got into wrestling because of wrestling. Never hit me until I was doing, I think, the notes uh, for the Brian episode. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, wrestling figures really got me into wrestling. Because my brother, my late brother, who he had Series 1 Hasbros, the whole series. And he wasn't like a wrestling fanatic, I, I don't feel, by any means. But he had them because there was like that was the toys at that time. Yeah, he was because you're a kid and that was the trend and whatever. Yeah, uh, that was he was two years older than me. I don't even think he had Ninja Turtles. He had He Man. Your shit. Uh, he had He Man and he had Series One Hasbro's. And I didn't know what these 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 toys were, but I would take them and play with them because my older brother had them. And I was like, man, but what are these? And so then they showed me wrestling. And I saw Ultimate Warrior, and literally, it was. But like you, like you asked, going back to your question, there was never like a. I watched it for a bit, and then it kicked, and I was like, "Man, this is awesome!" It was instantly. I watched it, and I can remember, like, saying to my grandpa at this house that I live in now. This was his house, and so saying to him, "Hey, I'm gonna be a wrestler. That's gonna be me." And just obviously at my size and stature and all that, it was kind of just chuckled at like, like everyone, like, like a kid going, yeah, I'm going to be Superman or Spider-Man. Yeah, of course. It, for someone like me, it's the same believability as another child going, I'm going to be fucking Spider-Man. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's, I was going to, I was going to play second base for the Mets. As yeah. you see, that worked out. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, it was never a, it was never a, like a, uh, a match or like a moment where like I mean I it's it's funny and yet sad now the students that come up through our school here and I go all right what's the moment or the guy that got you and they go they're like Edge Seth Rollins and I'm going I know oh my god that drives like, me nuts I can't believe it and it just makes me feel so old but it makes sense it was like when I got yeah. started me going hey uh one two three kid because that was like the first wrestler i like besides ultimate warrior as a kid that was the first wrestler wrestler i really liked was one two three kid and it was just like i don't but there was never a moment it was just i was hooked instantly i don't remember ever like ever like there being a a hooking moment just i was the the showmanship of it all at that era the eight, the 90, 1990, just fuck man Su- superstars just hit me so much so 
when I was in the second grade, I had a friend named Freddie Rios. Okay. And I always remember this. And he goes, do you watch wrestling? And I go, no. Like, what? Where do, wh- where's wrestling? What? What mm-hmm. is it? Like, he's like, oh, turn on, on Saturday at noon, watch Channel 5. It comes on. And now that stuck with me that whole week at school. I'm yeah. like, holy shit, I got to get this Saturday, man. I got to watch this wrestling thing people are talking about. So I'm like seven years old. I watch Superstars. It was the first time I'm watching Superstars. The first wrestler I ever saw is Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And he comes out with his board and his flag and he's giving the thumb like this fucking guy rules. And what really got me hooked, hooked. I always say WrestleMania five is my WrestleMania. Like that whole year of buildup. Mine was six. Five, I was still young. Six was Mm -hmm. mine. So five, I like my mom would tape me in that year building up to WrestleMania five. She would set the VCR to get Saturday night's main event. And I would watch superstars every Saturday wrestling challenge every Sunday. Like I started getting the LJN figures around that time. And I've, those LJN figures were some of the I most know. played with toys of my childhood. Yeah. I absolutely, to this day, I love them. Like, I love these big rubber guys the guys are yep. doing now. The second I saw that demolition pack, I'm like, oh, my <coughs> God, like, do I got to start collecting these? Because I have so many vivid memories of having my figure fed on the floor of my bedroom on the weekends, yep. writing out the results. You know, I used to have loose leaf paper. Yep. I kept it in a binder. Then the new show would go at the back, you know, and then I, you know, come next week, we'd do another show. Um, and we were called, it was the J O E was my federation, the juggernauts of earth. And one of my favorite ways to do a match was I had this wire rack that like, you know, it was just a keep sitter. It was this little yeah. rack on wheels and you just put shit in it. One of my favorite things to do was cause I didn't have like a cage. I put all the wrestlers in the rack. And I would just shake it. Shake it. And the I did that with a laundry just, hamper. I did it with a laundry hamper. A circle I never thought hamper. of a laundry hamper. Yeah. But this is how crazy I was. I didn't want my figures to get scuffed up. So there could only ever be two at in at the same time. And I like just like went like like I shook it slow, but then I had little hands, so I would reach in the things of the hamper and I could still do a, a match in it. Mm. But man, my when my friends would come over, Joe, and they would just smash my Hasbros together, I would go on. That's not how you play with these. You'd lose your mind, right? That's not how you play with these. You don't know how to do this. <laughs> you might be able to do that with your turtles figures, but I don't do. You don't do that with Hasbro with these wrestlers. I don't want nails having scuff marks. Oh, uh, dude! I used to shake the shit out of this little rack, <laughs> and the, the wrestlers would go flying, right? And then, like inevitably, like one guy's arm would get hooked on the side, and he'd right. end up winning. So like Corporal Kirshner was my champion for like six months and <laughs> I had this little paper belt I made and I would tape it to him. That way he could wear it to the uh, ring the next time I had the, the WWF sling him, fling him ring. Yep. And I used to keep it on top of my dresser <laughs> and I would keep the wrestlers lined up like around the ring. And then whichever ones didn't fit around the ring would go in the ring. And I broke it because I decided that as I was getting ready to play one day, Hulk Hogan and the macho man, wanted to show the rest of the roster how strong they were and they were going to carry the ring down from my dresser to put it on the floor. So I had Hogan in one hand, Macho on the other, and I just like pressed them up against the sides of the ring. And I, when I went to lift it, the ring just fell like to the ground Gosh. and the post broke. Oh, so then like my dad tried like melting the post back together. It was never the same though. No? Ah. My, so because I used my, my, my brother's ring so much, my dad built me out of wood a replica Hasbro ring. Like, did the measurements of the Hasbro ring and all of that and made this in the basement out of wood and then had rubber bands for the ropes. And it was the cool... I, I wish I had photos of it because it would be such like a cool... It would be something to like, hey, this is how much my dad like didn't want me to miss out on playing with stuff, mm-hmm. but didn't also like, we didn't have the money to buy a second ring wrestling ring. So you built oh, that was my thing for sure. Like there was no was, way I was getting a second I just, ring. I remember to this day, a wooden ring. And then my brother, like, I think it was either like outgrew it and or wasn't really into it. Or like 
just really annoyed that his little brother kept playing with him. So he just gave me all of his, all of his stuff. And so I, uh, to this day in my garage, I have all my played with all my played with my personal collection figures. Mm-hmm. And there's two of every series one Hasbro. So I have two Andres, wow. two beef cakes, two boss men, which were all tag teams, of course, but they're all like jobber tag teams as the series mm-hmm. went on. Like there was a, just two giants as a team team, but they never won. All right, guys, that is part one. Again, just two pals having a laugh, uh, telling stories about how we met um, and and kind of his introduction of who the captain is. Uh, I love that man. He he really, really, he was worried. Peek behind the curtain, as we do sometimes. He was worried about doing this interview. And he kept saying, what do I need? What do I need to, for prep? And then, it, like, he truly felt after doing the interview um he goes you've had kofi kingston and Wee man and now me he goes i can't get over it i said yeah because you're a you're an entertaining human and b you're a buddy and he's just fun to listen to and to talk to yeah Damn, shout out to Shoes, man. If it, Hopefully this gave you a little peek behind the curtain into a little bit more of not only Swoggle and Shoes' relationship, just a little bit more about Shoes as a wrestler human being. Uh, we look forward to having you guys back for part two, which will be the next episode. Uh, but once again, at Going Postal Pod on all forms of social media, at Dylan Postal on all forms of social media, make sure to go check out DylanPostal.com for all the links, the merch store, the Pro Wrestling Tea store, links to all the socials, the YouTube, whatnot, all that. SwaggleAuction.com. Get yourself a free $10 whatnot credit. And um, this is normally the part where I'd be like, oh, Dylan, we're going to do a hot take and tell people what we're doing next week. But you guys yell enough throughout the course of exactly. the part one and the part two uh because the shoes just really knows how to push your buttons so right. next episode will be joe shoes part two and uh there's nothing else left to do but to have you oh, hold oh, on whoa, 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 he's off oh, he's got stuff wait wait george your plugs <laughs> what's happening on game marks I also have another podcast. It is the Game Marks Podcast. It is myself and former Create a Pro Champion, Johnny Clash, but Dylan likes to refer to our good friend as... Chris. Thank you. And we break down a different wrestling video game each and every week. We are currently live on YouTube every Thursday. We are raising money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Every Thursday, 8 p.m., playing video games, doing episodes live. Uh, there are little incentives that you can do that will change and mess with the episode. Sometimes we have to sing for a minute uh, everything that we say. Sometimes we have to talk in a high-pitched voice. We have to cut wrestling promos on each other, which I am terrible at. And John's really good at because he's a wrestler. Uh, talking wrestler voices for a minute while we go through the episode. It's chaos. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we have a good time, and you can be a part of that. Every single Thursday from now until the end of December, youtube.com slash game marks podcast. Come and hang out. Without further ado, please do that signature Dylan Postal sign off for the end of every episode.